everybody, this is Neil Filer. I'm here with the weekly astrological message. And before I even begin telling you what's in our celestial soup for this next week, I want to talk to you about why you're seeing this video. And of course it has a relevance to this week's energies. Just want to remind all of us. Why are we even spending time listening to my words? Listening to astrology in general. Listening to other words of other people. What it is that you search. That you yearn for. That yearning, that searching. That emanates from within you. Is a call for reunification with source. Going back home. The home you always knew is yours. And indeed is all of ours. Kindling that eternal flame. Nurturing that delicate flower within us. Nurturing it so it would grow in strength and brightness and give us, give us assurance and a sense of destiny and belonging on this treacherous road that we are all on, this perilous road that we are all on, isn't it? And that yearning for reconnection with Source, that direct connection with Source, with no ambassadors in between, is something that was always there from before your birth and would always be there after you die. Nothing, no one, can take it away from you. And this week, folks, is a lot about the nurturing of that inner connection, that understanding that you are indeed an important part of the fabric we call life, of the fabric we call God, of the essence we call love of the wonder we call life that we are all indeed here today breathing listening because we are the ones we have been waiting for we are the ones we've dreamt about, yearned for. We are the heroes that their time to shine has come. We are all the same beyond our differences. There is so much free hatred and fear in this world right now. The only true way of combating it is by building bridges of understanding and love and unification. It doesn't mean we need to agree with the ones who stand opposed to us. But it means that we do not let ourselves be damped and stained by this swamp that we <coughs> are being led into when we are faced with fear and violence in our lives. We will not diminish our morals or ethics because others diminished theirs. We choose love and light and non-violence if we can every breath. We all know there is a time to give life and a time to kill. 
unfortunately in the region I come from I know it but we choose life we choose peace we choose brotherhood regardless of nation regardless of sect regardless of religion or sex or sexual preferences or gender or color or social status but we judge a person like Martin Luther King Jr. said on their content of their character nothing else the content of their character 60 years later these words echo so strongly because indeed everywhere we are battling we seem to forget that and we need to remember it with this lunation we need to remember our unification and ability as teardrops in an ocean that make up the currents, that make up the tidal waves, that make up the tsunamis that change the shores. We have a responsibility to work together, to change this. Because we are walking a very high line with two very deep abysses on our two sides one of ecologic extinction and the second of a faster way to self-extinct called war right now there are sparks going off worldwide things are hitting up and it's like sparks in a dry field it could flame up so quickly that we wouldn't know where we are it would feel like a total different reality from what we knew a year ago and it already does but it's not the end of the road <laughs> if we're not careful really working for unification and love and understanding is an obligation we all need to take right now or this world could turn into a flame in no time and I'm not talking about weeks I'm talking about months oops sorry but this is money time this is the money time We're going to look back at this time. This isn't just a year. What part did you take in reshaping the future? Future of your children and theirs. Future of all human future generations. We are the ones we have been waiting for. You are the savior you have been waiting for. You are the superhero and the main character of your life story. And I know you're going to watch this one one day. How would you like it to end? We all have our work at that fast. So let's go down to the week. We begin this week, Saturday the 29th. I just want to mention, I'm talking on Eastern European time. If you are in the States, take it a day backwards. If you're in the Pacific, Australia and such, take it a day forward. So the 29th, <coughs> we're having uh, Mercury, Trine, Jupiter. This is a time to open our mind, to learn more, to put ourselves out there, be part of our community, and enlarge our communities and our roots in our communities in our families and tribes this is an age in which whoever has the strongest tribe and community would flourish 
flourish, yeah, and uh, and and rise up, and um, would flower and rise up, and um, money in the bank is not going to be that important in a hundred years, as funny as that is, because our economic systems are going to change totally, and extreme wealth is not going to be legal anymore. There's going to be a total redistribution of of wealth. And it's going to happen sooner than you think. Maybe even within our own lifetimes. And this is definitely something we should all work for. Um, because both economic um, structures capitalistic and socialistic are not going to last. They're not feasible as the world changes. Capitalist systems, in capitalist systems, populations understand that there's a greater need for a community support, for not letting people get evicted from their homes and die from hunger on the streets or turn to crime and violence because it affects them. And on the other hand, in socialist countries, the socialist structure would not be able to support a growing amount of elderly, not working uh, uh, populations living longer. So the whole concept of money as an aim to put a roof over our head and food on our table is going to completely change. And in order for that to actually be feasible, the redistribution of wealth is needed. Yes. So, open up your minds, learn more concepts. Um, this Mercury uh, trine Jupiter is an expansive aspect to our minds. We could all be brilliant more than usual at this time. Venus, on Sunday the 30th, is opposing Pluto. This is a time of intense communications with our relationships, a check of authenticity. It could make things that were hidden underneath the surface rise up so that we actually have to deal with them. And tr sometimes it can cause our relationships to transform. Even our self-value is under transformation and mutation. And also the way that we actually create value money. Our work in the sense of salary can be in change mode right now uh, for good or for worse. So we need to be taking risks but calculated ones at this moment and not be too intense with uh, our demands. Mercury is opposing Neptune on the same day and these are all effects that will be there a couple of days before and will last a couple of days after. So when Mercury opposes Neptune, this is the time to really watch that we're not looking at the world, our relationships, work, whatever, with our pink rose-colored glasses on. We need to remain attached to the grounds of reality and make sure we're looking at the whole picture. Nevertheless, this is a very romantic time, but especially with information, ideas, understandings, our words, we have to make sure that we are speaking the truth, that we are understanding the truth, that we are not caught up in illusions because reality can then slap us on our face just a little later uh, down this week. Um, on the 31st we have the Sun Queen Kong in Chiron. This is a time to purify. This is a time to actually understand what from our behavioral patterns needs to remain in the past. Listen, the world is a changed world. It's not going to be like before 2020. And we need to make it into a new world that is better. I'm not saying Corona is here to last. I'm saying that the economic structural changes are here to last economies are going to have to change and it's going to be not easy during the next few years 
and we need to innovate and look outside the box right now find new ways to actually progress and update utilizing others around us our social circles our friends the elites that we're part of and as you guessed it um, things that work cannot be the things that would be in the future there are things that need to be filtered out and that sun quincog skyron is a filtering out aspect a purifying aspect take out that old skin leave it behind you know um, it's like you've been living in an ice age and now the world is warm there's no snow anymore but you're hanging on to the furs you're keeping them on you all the time you think this world is way too hot way too hot well undress leave the furs behind winter is over a spring is here and we need to make it bloom and you can't do it sweating and murmuring about the past you need to be thankful about progress as hard as it is and only that feeling of cherishing the fact that we are alive that we are chosen to be part of this historical time that we would be told stories and fables about for the rest of times that you're even part of this elite group of souls that was chosen and picked to live here right now and be part of this living ocean this fabric this breathing fabric rekindle that connection remember remember what you are and who you are you are a member of a greater whole put yourself in that greater whole without cancelling yourself out without being uh, 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 a martyr but actually heightening your connection to source your feeling of destiny and the place that you are in as the right place as a profound place and give thanks for that for that is the road to actually being more content and happy about this changed world that we all live in and indeed our mind is under change it's a great time to be in therapy mercury is trining pluto it's a great time to understand ourselves and our society and our communities better and transform them and a day later on wednesday the second it's the full moon in pisces it's sextiles uh, uh, Uranus closely and also um, Jupiter broadly that means that they are both enshrined to the Sun and that's actually a great great aspect to have along with this Pisces full moon at the 10th degree of Pisces the Pisces full moon is a dreamy moon it has all these energies of unification and remembering and 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 spirituality and creativity that I've talked about before but it also could be too passive and too naive and the fact that it sextiles Uranus gives it a need to update itself a need to be more communal a need to be more active and have a faster pace and also the trine uh, the sextile to uh, uh, Jupiter gives it a more expansive, even more philosophical, more spiritual, forward-moving, entrepreneurial spirit. Venus is going to be opposed to uh, Saturn. This is the reality check I've been talking about. 
when Venus is opposing Saturn, we get a reality check in our relationships, in our self-value, in the way we earn money. So, be, oh, be, this is a time that we need, that we understand, that we actually uh, um, are exposed to everything we need to do in, and change in order to grow up, mature, and take responsibility. So it's a time that could be a little depressive in that sense. And remember, it has a few days before and after that it has its effect. But it could be also a time of maturation, a time of establishment of something in our finances or something in our relationships if we have been working correctly. It's definitely a test. And Thursday, the... 3rd of September, Mercury trines Saturn. We feel our communications becoming more mature, more strategic, more responsible, and, and much more um, practical in nature. Let's take things forward. Um, and then Friday, the 4th, we have Moon conjunct Chiron, great day for healing, but a sensitive day to getting hurt or hurting others and Venus is squaring Mars on that day that means that we really have to be careful with our relationships and with our relationships with money and work and such like clients and not be too combative not be intolerant or uh, argumentative and because this is an aspect that could lead to firecrackers and maybe separation individuations or at least a bit of uh, uh, aggravation. Um, it's good sexually, so it could heat up things, it could heat up passion. And Mercury does sextile that Venus on that day, so it could really help us speak and communicate everything that we want to communicate in a much more peaceful, harmonious, loving manner. Saturday the 5th, it's a day we need to watch ourselves, not to become too obsessive or too total or symbiotic with things, as the moon is going to square Jupiter and Pluto on that day. However, uh, Mercury is moving into um, the sign of Libra for the next uh, months or so. Uh, not months or so, two weeks or so. And um, we're heading into a retrograde again of Mercury in October. Um, but right now it's going into the diplomatic sign of Libra and it's going to make us all understand other points of views a little better and a little more easily and that's so much more needed in this world because what the world needs now is love or oh sweet love indeed and with these sweet words I'm going to leave you and tell you that if you want to enjoy the 30% Corona a uh, special discount that I have on for my community, for private sessions, classes, or joining a group, contact me. Thank you for sharing and looking at this. God bless you. Goddess bless you. Source bless you. May we all live long and prosper.